Maybe we can have a word of prayer to start things off here. Our gracious God and our Father, our Lord and our Savior, we do just bow before you this evening, and uh, we're here, a bunch of guys gathered together with your word, and we have a desire to just learn and just have a, just an enjoyable time just digging into it and uh, learning more about you and just enjoying fellowship with one another. And, and so we ask for your hand to be upon our time together that you might bless it, uh, that uh, you just show us your favor. We seek it with our whole heart and uh, bless this time together this week. Uh, we commit it into your hands and we love you. And we just uh, ask these things, Lord Jesus, in your name and for your name's sake. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay. So this is the first session of the first why miss and who knows this could be like going on for like however many years and you're here at the first one so when you're old you'll be able to say after it's been going on for so many years you'll be able to say i was dead for the first one <laughs> <laughs> and richard holler will still be alive <laughs> but uh no it's uh, it's just good to be here together for the first one of these um uh, I probably, because it's such a first one, uh, and this is a bit of a new experience for me, um, I, you might not see me like in between times too much because I'm probably going to need to just look over things. Uh, and uh, plus, I, I'm newly married too, so I might want to spend time with my wife too. So uh, you may not see me as much, but uh, I'll try and just be able to hang out as much as I can. Um, the way it's going to work is uh, it's going to try and be super flexible with like, like tonight we have two sessions and I have a couple places in my notes where it might be good to stop and if not keep going a little bit and then stop at another place. So we're, we're it's going to be flexible some time of our uh, sessions might be uh, 45 minutes and then another one might be, you know, 65 minutes or something so uh, we'll try and be a little bit flexible with that just to see how things are going but we're going to take like a break in between two sessions tonight we'll take a break. Um, and then uh, we'll have sessions. We'll take breaks in between the morning sessions as well. Um, if you have a question at any point in time, uh, you know, please feel free to just raise your hand and ask it. Um, and uh, well, I have an agenda, but like you know, <laughs> well, it, it's uh, it, it's not as important as just just the time we're able to have together and you guys being able to interact. And ask questions and if we go down little bunny trails that's okay um i might try and like you know, at some point i might try and like you know bring it back uh, so don't be offended by that but i'm also going to pause at different times for discussion so uh just know that those those times will be coming um opportunities for you to share something go back to something that was said or bring up a verse that you you were thinking of in fact i uh i very much can expect that these messages are going to be better because of your input, you know, so you're going to say things, you're going to see things and, ha you know, have these observations and these verses. And uh, it's just going to help me to make this even better because your observations are, you're going to have some quality things to share. So I'm looking forward to that too. Um, all right. So how are we going to start? How are we going to start this week? I was praying about this, uh, wondering, what is it that I want to say first? Um, you might, I mean, first off, you've, the subject for this week is, is prophecy. Um, so that's our overarching theme, but uh, tonight and, and, and maybe not so much into that, just kind of something preparatory to it. Um, and then we're gonna take a, 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 a walk in a way through prophecy that maybe is a little bit unexpected, but uh, I, I'm sure it's just going to be a lot of fun. Um, but I was thinking, how can I start? What is it that I want to say first? And I thought perhaps we'd start with some theology. Uh, theology, it sounds like a big thing and is a big thing, but it's just when you're talking about God, when you're talking about what he is like. And there's a lot of things in the Bible that tell us what God is like. And if we're Christians, we want to know what God is like. We want to know him for who he really is. I mean, people have all kinds of opinions about what God is like. Um, we want to study the word of God. We want to know what it teaches us about God. And that's theology. And so the first thing I wanted to start off with was something about God. And that is this. This is right from the Bible. I hope you don't mind. I'm not going to tell you where it is. If I see you on your phones looking for uh, on your Bible apps, I'm going to call you out. No. <laughs> I just want to, what I want to do is I want to unfold a verse to you bit by bit. 
just in this case, I want to unfold the verse to you bit by bit so that you can kind of, you can follow the progression without seeing the whole verse at one time. So I'll give you the reference in a little bit, but this verse tells us that our God is the God of hope. Um, anyone, can anyone like tell us hope? What, what comes to mind like hope? Um, a definition for that or some characteristic of that, of what it means to have hope. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on how you're asking, but like worldly hope would be like more of like an I wish kind of statement. Yeah. Whereas like biblical hope is more of a sure thing. It's, uh, yeah. It's more like it's going to happen. That's excellent. Yeah. So like if you're walking down the street and like the, you know, you see someone dropped a lottery ticket for that day, uh, for, for the next day, you know, you pick it up and you're like hoping that you're going to win it. <laughs> it's like completely unlikely. It's uh, most certainly not going to happen, but you're just hoping that it will. Well, a biblical hope is just not like that. It's just like Victor said, like it's a confidence, a full assurance that what I have been told is coming is going to come. And it's, it's, it's meant to cheer. It's meant to just be so healthy for us as we're going through this world to be the people, the kind of people that know that their God is the, the God of hope. Uh, he's a lot of things, uh, and this is one of them. The next thing that we learn in this is it says that this God of hope will fill you. So right away, you're thinking, okay, this is, this is a good God. I, I, I enjoy the fact that my God is the God of hope. And now I, I, I'm understanding from what the Bible is telling me that this God of hope can fill me. All right, well, this sounds really good. What He can fill me. That just sounds like something very much desirable that this, this one can fill me. Well, fill me with what? That's the next question with all joy. So... Just grab a hold of that and believe that, understand that this God of hope is a God that can fill us with joy. And in this world, it would just be a delight to be able to go through it with a lot of joy. <laughs> I mean, and God is able to do that. He's able to fill us, to fill us to capacity with joy. Um, in fact, one of the things I think is pretty cool is that he might actually be able to increase our capacity too. So whatever, if, you're, if you've experienced a full joy at some point in time, it, God can do even better because he can increase your capacity. He can, there's a, a little phrase in the Psalms that says, um, you shall enlarge my heart. So just think about your heart being filled with joy, but then God says, let me just make your heart a little bigger. Let me make your heart a little bigger and I can fit more joy in there. And that sounds to me like what eternity is going to be like. The future for us is a future in which we're always going to be full and we're always going to be increasing. He's just going to continue to enlarge our capacity to take in more of things like joy. But that's not all that this verse tells us he wants to fill us with. And peace. This God of hope, he wants to fill us with all joy and peace. Um, anyone got a good, like, explanation of what peace would be? What's, like, a, a characteristic of it? Um, a picture of it, Ryan? Stillness and calmness. Yeah, stillness, calmness. Yeah, that's good. Anybody else? Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Oh, you're not troubled at all. Yeah untroubled yeah yeah peace is pretty cool you think about that story where jesus said peace to the to the sea you know it was troubled but then it wasn't <laughs> because of, of the peace that he spoke to it and god wants to fill us with that the, the the potential the invitation that's there for the children of god to to experience this in their life this kind of joy this kind of peace but then there's even a little bit more it says and abound in so he's the God of hope, can fill us with all joy and peace. And then he's like going to tell us something, but I can also make you abound in something. And we already probably understand, like, this has got to be good. This has got to be good. Whatever it is that he's about ready to tell me, it's got to be good. What is he going to make me abound in? Hope. And that brings us back around to the beginning. He is the God of hope. 
And that his desire, his heart is that we should be those who are just abounding in this wonderful, exciting expectation of what's coming. And that's like, we're going to talk about prophecies. We're going to talk about this God who's revealed prophecy to us. And he wants us to just look ahead and be excited as we anticipate what it is that, what, that he's going to be bringing. Um, I left something out. That's why there's the big space there. I left something out on purpose. And this is why I didn't want you guys to look at the verse because I wanted to do this and leave out something. That's typically not a good idea. <laughs> you don't typically leave something out from the word of God. Only, I guess it's okay if you're going to put it back in. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. And then so that you can abound in hope. But there's something in between there. Does anyone know what it is that you know the verse well enough to know what's in between there? It's kind of a, it's really the condition for this. Brian? As you trust in him. Very close. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the idea in believing. In believing. So this God of hope wants to fill us with joy. He wants to fill us to capacity with peace. He wants us to have just overflowing with this hope of things that are to come. But it's, it's, it's going to be conditional on us having faith. I mean, all, if you're a Christian, all the things that are to come that God has promised you, all the wonderful things the Bible reveals to us, they're yours. They're absolutely yours. And that's unconditional because you're in Christ. But if you want to uh, uh, just lay hold of those things, understand those things, and have joy and peace that those things bring, faith, there has to be faith. That's how the Lord brings about these things, is if people believe him, they receive those benefits from him in an experiential way. And that's what we really want. We don't want to just have these things in a future day and look back and say, wow, I could have been filled with all joy and peace if I had just believed a bit more. I could have had hope if I had just had faith and trusted God. And that's what we want to be able to do, especially as we talk about things that are to come. We want to have hope and the joy and the peace that they bring. So in believing what? He wants us to believe. What does he want us to believe? What does he want us to believe? If, if this is connected, these wonderful things are connected to believing. What does God want us to believe? There could be a few right answers for this. In his son. In his son. Yeah, that's got to be at the top, right? <laughs> We'd say maybe the gospel. Go ahead. Uh, that the kingdom to come. Okay. Right. The kingdom to come. Yeah. Yeah. He has God's promises. God's promises. Yeah. Yeah. And we can trust in him. We can trust in him. Yeah. Yeah. And how I'm leading to one thing in particular. How do we know these things? His like word. His word. He wants us to believe what he says. I know it's really simple, but he wants us to believe what he has said. He wants us to believe his word. So at the very onset of our like week this week, I just want to make clear where I stand that I believe with all of my heart, with all of my heart, I believe that this is the word of God. God has spoken to us. This is, this is his message. And as I believe this message, I can have this kind of experience in my life. As I believe what it is that he has said, I believe this to be the word of God. It should be revealed, uh, received by us as the word of God. And let me ask you this. What do you think is probably the most outstanding thing that comes to mind when someone believes the word of God? What's like the most incredible thing that can happen if someone hears what God has to say and they believe what God has said? What's like the, the best thing that we could possibly think of happening? Sanctification? Uh, yeah. I was going to say receive salvation. Salvation, yeah. I know. <laughs> like people believe the gospel, they get saved. God, God's message comes to them. And what does he require of them? Just believe what I've said. Just believe the message. I'll save you. Believe the message. I'll give you eternal life. Believe the message. I'll give you an inheritance. I'll place you in Christ and call you my child. Just believe the message. 
it's really incredible the way God has set things up. He speaks and he just wants us to believe it. But we also want to go on believing. We started by faith. You guys, we started by faith. We have to keep going by faith. We have to keep, we trusted the Lord when we believed, we, we first received Christ. We placed our faith in him. I just found out um, today about a young girl that just received Christ. Um, we're so excited about it. She just received Christ. She heard the message and she believed it. She's like one week old in the faith, one week old, just a little youngster, right, in the faith. And she's young too, but, but as we received Christ Jesus, so walk in him, like our daily walk, day, day by day, it's, it's, it's intended that we walk in such a way by faith. We don't just start by faith. We continue by faith. We continue to believe what God has said. We, we read the word of God. We want to know what he said. Hopefully you have an interest. You want to know what God has said. And then we keep on believing it. I want you to turn your Bibles now to uh, Ephesians chapter 1. And I'm not telling you the reference yet to this because I still left one more thing out, <laughs> which we'll get back to. I left one more thing out of that verse, and uh, we'll get back to that in just a little bit. But for now, turn to Ephesians 1, and maybe I could have uh, someone read verses 15 to 19. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks to you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his, of his inheritance in the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power okay now it goes on to talk about the working of his mighty power and which he did by raising christ from the dead but our 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 main phrase that we just want to focus in on is it says there in verse 19 that we should be able to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power we should, we should know that. We should know what is the exceeding greatness of this power toward us who believe. I mean, just to think of the power of the living God who has created all things, who knows all things. He's eternal. He never had a beginning. He'll never have an end. He's infinite. There's no end to him. He's all-powerful. He's just an awesome God. And people who believe him, they know his power. <laughs> they know his power. And we want to understand that connection. We want to understand that if God has spoken, I want to believe what it is that he said, because there's going to be power there, power to, to fill me with all joy and peace, power to, to help me uh, abound in hope. Go to um, 1 Thessalonians now, chapter 2. I just think about, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll get to that later. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Um, these are um, some people back in the first century who heard the gospel message. They believed it. They were, they were people who were bowing down to idols and they turned from that so that they could serve God and they were waiting for his son to come from heaven. I mean, they were already thinking about future things. They were waiting for the promise of Jesus to come from heaven. But we're looking at chapter two uh, and someone want to read for us verse 13. And there's such an important phrase here that we just want to get. It was true for us with regards to the gospel and it continues to be true for us in our Christian lives uh, and it'll come out in this verse, verse 13. So I want to read that. Yeah, go ahead. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as, 
as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. There we go. I mean, this is a great verse. Like if you don't have like maybe underlined or anything, this is just a great verse to know in the, in the New Testament. They, they receive the word of God and they said, it's like they said, this is not the word of men or not this message that's coming to us. It's not just like men are telling us this. It's not made up by a man somewhere. That's happened. People say that God spoke to them, but it's really just the word of men. But they knew that this wasn't just the word of men. They knew it was the truth. They knew it was the word of God. So they received it that way. And because they received it that way, because they believed it, what did it do? If it worked in them effectively. It worked in them effectively. Like the word of God came into their ears and they, they believed it and it like had power to work in them, like to save them. And it still has that power. It still has that power in the Christian life that we can know his power, that exceeding greatness of his power. But you guys, it's connected to us believing him, having faith in him. Uh, look at uh, the next letter that he writes to the Thessalonians. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Someone read for us verse 3. Second Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.3. Yeah, go ahead. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith goes exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. Okay. That's a whole nother like wonderful thing to talk about is how their love is just like overflowing toward each other. Um, but we're focusing in on the faith aspect. And I want you guys to know this, that um, if you didn't know it already, like faith grows. Faith grows. And, and Paul is so happy here that their faith is growing. And some of you like have, like especially Yonkers guys, like have probably heard me say this before, but faith is like the Christian superpower. Like we should have a cape because we actually, by faith, we look at those things that can't be seen. We look at things that can't be seen. Faith does that. That's like a superpower, you know? And that's our opportunity to hear what God has said, to believe it, to be able to look. Like this morning, um, you know, here we are in, in uh, my home assembly. There's the bread and the cup. And, you know, I don't see the Lord. Not actually, but he's there. <laughs> he's there. And as I grow in my faith more and more and more, it sees him more clearly. You guys, like, don't just assess things by the measure of faith that you have. Faith grows. If we give it a chance, if we yield to God, faith will grow. And then the kinds of things that we can just understand and see more clearly it's just there for us. And this God of hope, he can fill us with all joy and peace and make us abound in hope. But this is only accomplished in those who believe. And I was thinking today, even I'm like, God's up there in heaven. I can just imagine it. He's like looking over the whole earth. And you think about what kinds of things is he looking for? Like, what's he looking at? And he's just looking, his eyes are going everywhere. And there's one verse that says his eyes roll to and fro over the whole earth uh, to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are uh, faithful to him or loyal to him. Uh, so his eyes going all over the world and he's looking. And one of the things I just know he's looking for, he's like, where's faith? Man, I'm just, I'm so ready to act for the one who will believe me. I'm just looking for faith. The God of the universe, the great God, the awesome God, the only one and true God is looking on the earth, looking for those who believe him. And you just wonder what would happen what would happen in our, our lives if we really believed him, if we went on believing him? There's a, a story. Um, I remember I was cooking something in the kitchen in my house. This is going back years ago. And um, I was listening to a message on Voices for Christ. And I was just cutting up my food or whatever. And this guy, he's talking. And he's older. He's like older in the faith. He's probably like probably in the 70s or 80s or something. And he was like, he tells about this experience where he he went into his room and he just he just knelt down he had his bible in front of him on his bed and he just his his intention was to just he just wanted to know the mind of his lord he just wanted to know it better and he was just there spending time with the lord and then he said something and when he said this like 
I'm like, what? I had to pause it. I had to go back and listen to it again. And I, I went back and listened to it again. And then I like typed it out. <laughs> like, I can't believe what this guy just said. He says, and this is a quote. I was so overwhelmed with divine joy that I had to ask the Lord to stay his hand. I was so overwhelmed with divine joy. I had to ask the Lord to stay his hand. He was saying, it's too much. <laughs> Please, Lord. And I don't really think too many sorrows, too much pain, too much confusion. A lot of other things that we say, this is too much. But the Lord, like, he is so awesome. The great God. And for those who will trust in him and believe in him, he can fill them. And in this case, the brother was like, it's just too much. Will you please hold it off? It's just, I can't, but this is our God. And I was thinking if he was here, you know, we could tell him, like, listen, maybe what you needed to pray was that the Lord would enlarge your heart, that the Lord would increase your capacity so you could take more of it. <laughs> so uh, that would be maybe what I would be like, okay, Lord, it's too much. You got to make my heart bigger so I can take more of it in. But man, guys, individually, personally, what, what you can know about your God um, as you believe him, this is a, a great little quote from somebody. Faith makes the unseen world very near and very real. Do you guys like... Just, what, again, I say it again, whatever your measure of faith is, just don't think that that's, that's it. Like, when faith grows, it makes the unseen world very near and very real. And it's, it's really, it's, it's a good direction to move in because the unseen world is very real. Um, God is very real, and he wants to be known. So we are presented with the opportunity to hear what God has said and to believe it. And this brings us to a question. Uh, what has God said? What has God said? God has said something. He's spoken. He wants us to believe it. What is it that he has said? You know, I find this a very interesting thing. You know, this is, I, like I said, I believe with all my heart, this is the word of God. Um, and this is what he has said. This is his word. He has chosen the very things in this book. This is what he wants to give to us. And when you think of how much he could have said, I mean, how much history there is that he didn't record. Like he says, no, this is what I want to say. This is what I want to say. Nothing more, nothing less. This is what I want to say. And we have it right here. We're like, we're so blessed. I think about these Thessalonians. They were gathering together. They didn't even have a New Testament yet. They might, maybe they had, maybe had James. Maybe they had the letter of James. First Thessalonians is one of the first letters written in the New Testament. We're like, we got the whole thing. This is what God wants to say. And he wants us to believe it. I think about this one part in Revelation where John's writing down all the stuff that he sees, all the stuff that he hears. Um, and can anyone, just uh, curious to see if anyone knows this. Does anyone know there's something... Uh, he was told not to write. Know that. You probably, it might sound familiar once I tell you. The seven thunders uttered their voices. It's these seven thunders uttered their voices. And John like went to go write what they said. And he was told, don't write that down. <laughs> so we have no idea what the seven thunders said. Because John was told, don't write it down. And it's just a little glimpse of like, God says, I want them to know this. And I want them to know this. Here is what I want to say to you. Oh, the purposefulness of what he has revealed. The purposefulness of what he has revealed. So what has God said? What does God want to reveal by speaking? Let me ask you that. What do you think that like God ultimately wants to reveal by speaking? Okay, the truth. Yep, that's a great answer. He wants to make known the truth. What else do you think he might want to make known? Kind of already said that I didn't mean to, but I think so. What do you make known 
when you speak. Who you are. Who you are, yeah. <laughs> it's very much a way that we communicate us. We speak so that people might know us. You know, someone says, do you like this or you don't like it? <laughs> you just don't say anything. They're not going to know. You speak and your words communicate about yourself. And you guys, like, just please, like, understand that God has spoken. And the number one thing he's trying to make known to us by speaking is himself. You remember what we read, uh, Paul's prayer in Ephesians that we read, this, that the spirit of him that they would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in what? Spirit of wisdom and revelation in what? The knowledge of him. Wow. And go back to that quote, faith makes the unseen world very near and very real. And God's looking <laughs> to be very real to us. God is looking to be very near to us. And if faith looks upon things that are not seen and God is not seen, the number one thing we want to be able to see is him. We want to see God. Now, I am saying by faith, we're looking upon him with the eyes of faith. We're understanding him. We're, we're in a sense just seeing who this one is. Oh, that we should understand this, but there's just nobody like him. There's nobody like him. <laughs> there's nobody like God. Um, and he wants us to know him. He says, we too easily afford to talk of God and of God's things as though there were no more preciousness and excellency in them than our hearts could measure. That's why I go back to that idea. Like, whatever your faith is, if it's just, you know, whatever measure it is, it can grow and you can come to see things more clearly. You can come to know God better. And so this author just says, you know, sometimes we just act as if, like, my assessment of God, that's it. There's, there's nothing beyond that. I can't, he's not really, I'm not really, I'm not really like acknowledging that he's greater than that, that he's more precious than that, that whatever my assessment of it is, it's, he is greater than that. He's so, you guys, he's so much greater than our assessment of him. Just give it, like, we have to just keep giving him that chance to make himself known to us, keep astounding us, impressing us with the beauty of his person. It's just this, just so lovely. And he wants to be known. Um, this is another great quote here. Our religious lives are to be, I know some people like really poo-poo the, the word religion. It's true. We don't have a religion in a sense. We have a relationship. You've probably heard that before. But religion, it's a word in James. It's used like legitimately, um, you have to uh, keep yourself unspotted from the world, visit orphans and widows in their trouble, but there's a good religion, a good religion, uh, a pious life, and our religious lives are to be full of joy and peace and comfort. And look what the author says next. And if we become better acquainted with God, they will be. <laughs> That's fantastic. I have more joy, more peace, more comfort, they will be as I become more acquainted with God. Turn to Psalm 27. We're almost done here with the, let's see what time is it here, eight o'clock. Psalm 27. And I'm gonna end with the opportunity for you guys to just, uh, just share some things you've been thinking about as we've been going along here. So we'll have a few minutes for that in just a bit. That's Psalm 27. Uh, look at verse four. Someone want to read verse four uh, uh, for us? Psalm 27, four. Yeah. One thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Okay. David's like, this is, what, this is what I want. I want to see the Lord. I want to be in his house. I want to see his beauty. He's so pleasant. He's so lovely. Can I just look at him? Just talk to him. That's just what I want. That's the one thing that I want. Now somebody read um, verse eight. There's something so interesting about this, this verse. Um, someone read verse eight of Psalm 27. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> one you said, seek my face. My heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. 
Okay. So God wants to be known. He has spoken and given us his word so that he might be known. And he says, seek me, (laughs) seek my face, seek my face. And David says, my heart, you know, my heart says to that, is that what you're saying? You're saying seek my face? Well, this is what my heart says. (laughs) Your face, Lord, I will seek. Now, here's the part that is really cool about this verse. The first part, when you said, seek my face, that that those words there seek my face that's a it's addressed to more than one person it's a collective invitation so god is saying and you could say it even saying tonight because we're a bunch of us here god is saying seek my face collectively he wants all of his people so the invitation goes out to everyone and says hey seek my face all of you But when David says, your face, Lord, I will seek, it's personal. It's personal. Guys, you just have to decide for yourself. God wants to be found. He's willing to be found. He's the most lovely person we could ever know. And and, uh, he's the God of hope. And life is just uh, not without its sorrows and its troubles, but he's... He's just a delight to walk with him, to engage, and to. And he says to all of his people, "Come and seek me." And it reminds you of of uh, the church at Laodicea, where Jesus is knocking at the door, and he's like, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him." Of course, he wants everyone in that church, everyone in that church, to let him in. He says, "How about you?" How about you? Will you let me in? Will you seek my face? I extend it to all, but will you do it? And it's a decision that we have to make personally. I love this next quote. Some of these things I hope, like, they're kind of deep. Some of the books I read are from, like, the 1800s. (laughs) So they kind of, like, sometimes I had to reword a little bit just to make it, like, man, that's too complicated. (laughs) But just sometimes the the, the images that they give us and what they write. I love this idea of wealthy places. Just think about wealthy places. Um, I mean, the first thing I'm thinking about is like, you know, like some resort in which there's just like uh, so much um, just wonderful things to enjoy and, and uh, things that would cost so much money to be able to be a part of. And you're just it's a wealthy place. And in a spiritual sense, this author says, to wealthy places, indeed, grace introduces us. You know, we don't deserve this. When you see the word grace, you just say it's a gift. Like, we did not deserve what God wants to give to us, even that God wants to make himself known to us. It's just grace. It's just grace. Okay, so grace introduces us to these wealthy places as God is thus manifesting himself. Manifesting himself. He's making himself known. But into these wealthy places... We must make our passage each one for himself. This is an individual thing. Each one of us for himself must take this journey. So just thinking about how much God is just ready. He's right there waiting to be known. And we have to decide for ourselves if we would enter into these wealthy places as the author puts it. Um. What do you think of this? Let me pause here uh, and uh, maybe I'll take, after some discussion, maybe I'll just take another five minutes to finish up. But let me just pause here. Like what, um, any thoughts just about the things that we've been thinking of so far? Anything you'd like to share? Any verses or experiences or questions, anything? Yeah. I'm just one thing I'm trying to wrap my mind around is the fact that, I'm um, just going to what you said. The, man who, who was like older in faith how he would just like he was so overwhelmed yeah. with divine joy that he had to ask god just to stop yeah, yeah. And yeah it's just like amazing to just think about just a little like one percent of what he could have been feeling yeah. in that moment and think that we're going to be feeling that for all eternity yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i should have you know just to back up a little bit with a, a, a biblical phrase that we all know what biblical phrase would you think of to describe what that man's ex- experience was from the psalms famous psalm is it psalm 23 i think 
something my, about my cup runs over. yeah my cup runs over right we know that my cup overflows uh so that was that that was that brother's experience this cup was overflowing <laughs> yeah anybody else yeah the verse that comes to mind is um, Jeremiah 29, 13. And it says, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And the search that we make with our heart, it's like, that's where faith is found, right? If you believe in your heart, that's where faith, you know, that's where it seems the Bible puts faith is right there in our heart. So if, uh, if we're going to seek him with our heart, it's, it's by means of faith that we do that. And we seek him with our whole heart. He says, you're going to find me. <laughs> you're going to find me. Anybody else? Yeah, um, yeah. I think it was the quote before this one. I know it started off with, um, we choose to ignore the thought of God. And it kind of looks like along the lines of, it's almost like we devalue mm -hmm. our Lord. And then at our assembly this past week, we were given a free chart out of prayer because one brother was like, hey, instead of praying for a cheap truck, let's pray for a free truck. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, yeah. oftentimes it's like, no, we're not going to ask for that. That's mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's such an amazing thing. We just sit down and just realize how powerful our God is. Yeah, yeah. You guys ever seen that movie, uh, Facing the Giants? Yeah. yeah, you know when he gets that truck, man, I cry out, man. I start crying you know, every time, like, oh man. <laughs> I was looking, but yeah, just the, the you know, God just can do things that just are. We're here, and He's like here. Some of what has been mentioned too brings me back to one of your messages you gave at Bethany too. You just wanted us to kind of take a step back and realize no matter how much whatever is joy or whatever we feel here on earth compared to heaven, it's incomparable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for like that one person you heard on, you know, Voices for Christ to say that like, can you dial it down a little bit? It's almost <laughs> amazing where it's like he's at capacity yeah, of how yeah. much joy you could feel, but you know, in the next life, it's going to be so much more joy and yeah. such a bigger capacity to. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, sometimes I just get like, start smiling like so big because I just think about when it's actually happening. Like you guys were trying to talk about things and about, you know, heaven and thinking what it was like to see the Lord and the joy. And I was like, one day it's just like, we're going to be there. Like it'll be happening to us. Amazing to think what's ahead for us. We'll turn to uh, just a couple more minutes. Let's do, go to maybe a quarter after. So five more minutes, maybe. Go to Revelation chapter 19. Like, all right, Revelation, this prophecy. <laughs> Revelation chapter 19. And I got a, I got a pretty interesting image to show you here. I, I think the, I think like the image I'm about to show you, like, uh, uh, well, I don't know, clean it out, but I just let you enjoy it. <laughs> so Revelation chapter 19, and uh, I just want to say that um, even in our subject of prophecy this week, God is looking to make himself known. Even in prophecy, God is looking to make himself known. And that's why we're here at this incredible verse. Uh, someone want to read for us um, Revelation 19, 10. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 10 says, Then I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren who hold the testimony of Jesus, worship God. Mm. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm. Okay. So first off, let me show you this. Is, uh... There you go. That's pretty cool. And I, I spent way too much time on Google and DuckDuckGo. <laughs> 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 Just like trying to find good images. Of, 
but uh but man i'm like i gotta get a cool image i can have some of these old like drawings from like the 1600s i need something a little bit but uh so john falls at the feet of this angel and to worship and the angels like don't do that but what he says he says worship god but the next phrase I, I can't tell you how many times I had read through Revelation over the years, and I would get to that phrase, and I'm like, man, I wonder what that means. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Basically, it means that the prophets, if you line them all up, you'd say, what's the spirit that they all share? Of course, you'd say the Holy Spirit. But what's the spirit that they all share? What, what do they all have in common? All the prophets, what do they all have in common? To testify of Jesus, <laughs> to testify of Jesus. When we go back, and we're going to do that this week, guys, and I'm hoping that you're going to have such a good time with this because it's just so much fun to see. Like the psalmist says, open my eyes, Lord. Open my eyes that I might see wondrous things from your law. That's exactly what we're going to do this week. We're going to the law even. First five books of the Bible, they say, open my eyes that I might see wondrous things here about the future. And one of the things, the main thing that the prophets are testifying about is Jesus. They want to put before us him. So even in prophecy, you guys, God is looking to reveal himself. Um, another one on that you can go to on your own. I'm going to skip it just for because of, of time. But John 15, 26, you can look that one up. That's a great verse too. Um, so if this is true, I want to finish off with just a challenge here. Uh, if this is true, that God has spoken and he's revealing himself, and, and as we hear what God has to say and we believe it, he can fill us with all joy and peace as we believe it, and we can abound in hope. If this is all true. The question is, well, then what, how's our relationship with the word of God? How's our relationship with the word of God? Do I really believe this is what God has spoken? I hope you'll have, I know it's going to be tough. Sometimes it's a tough schedule. I can't have quiet time. But guys, please, like, I don't know if it's okay to say this. I was like, if you can't make the prayer time because you need to have some quiet time and some personal time with the Lord, do it. Like, there needs to be a devotion to this book, a personal love for what God has said and a desire to know it and to believe it. Someone said about 700 years ago, someone said, Christ himself is in the scriptures. To be ignorant of them is to be ignorant of him. I don't know if you've ever heard of John Wycliffe. Um, that was what he said. Christ himself is in the scriptures, and to be ignorant of them is to be ignorant of him. Um, some of these, sorry guys, some of these might be a little like, ouch, but. I, I, I can't remember. I don't write down the authors all the time, but I, that just sounds like Tozer. <laughs> um, think of the time you've spent. How many half hours did you spend with your Bible? And how many did you spend with him? Recently? We do not take our faith seriously. enough. These authors, man, they just lay it out the way it is. What God's words are to me is the test of what he himself is to me. And I love this next one. <laughs> it is a blessed thing to thirst in relation to God. <laughs> it's a blessed thing to just desire him. Like you have a thirst. You just, it, what a blessed place to want more of him, to want to learn about him. And whatever you have learned and whatever you're going to learn even in these next few days you know just let it be understood that god has spoken so that he might be known and we want to get this clear in our heads that god wants to be known and he can be he really can be and to thirst for that to desire that and just imagine what it is that he might want to reveal to us and the last thing i'll just say is uh what happens when someone really begins to know god what happens when someone really begins to know god you just love him <laughs> you guys seriously you will fall in love more and more with god as you know him because there's just no one like him there's 
no one like our Savior. He's so lovely. Even in prophecy, he wants to make himself known. And as we just know him, we just love him, love him so much, it just grows. And it's, uh, it's, it's so appropriate, it's so very appropriate. So why don't we close in prayer and we'll take a break and uh, we'll come back in like uh, 15 minutes or so, I think. And uh, I think the next uh, session will be a little bit shorter. So, but uh, we'll take a 15 minute break. We'll come back at, let's say, 8.35, a little more than 15 minutes. So, Brian, you want to close us in prayer? Right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and the praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are God of love, mm -hmm. comfort, peace, and hope. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can hope in you for salvation. And just through every day of our lives, we can just be with you and grow closer and closer to you, Lord Jesus. Dear and wonderful Father and God and Savior. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for being um, this wonderful and most precious Savior for us. Help us to continue to thirst and hunger more for your word in the Bible and to just be close to you every day. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. amen.